You'll have heard the horrific news this week that a couple have been found guilty of murdering a teenage boy they accused of witchcraft. 15-year-old Christy Bramu was tortured and drowned in a bath on Christmas Day in 2010 by his sister, Magali Bramu, and her partner, Eric Bigubi. They were convinced he was possessed by witchcraft. And his punishments in a so-called deliverance ceremony became more and more violent and vicious, ultimately leading to the 15-year-old's death. His father, Pierre, speaking through an an interpreter, uh, told the BBC this week of his grief at the loss of his son. When this happened to you, as it happened to me, when I got the news, there was a pain in my heart. And that pain, I don't know how to describe it. Jenny Hopkins, London's chief Crown Prosecutor, says she always believed the plea of diminished responsibility uh, was unacceptable. And the jury agreed. Eric Bakubi knew exactly what he was doing. His actions were nothing short of torture, and he inflicted on the victims violence on an unimaginable scale. And the post-mortem examination revealed that Christie had suffered over 130 separate injuries and died from a combination of being beaten and drowning. Paramedics found his brothers and sisters in the blood-spattered living room. Detective Inspector Superintendent Terry Sharp from the Met Police paid tribute to his family. Today's outcome is a tribute to the bravery of Christie's parents, brothers and sisters who already traumatised were forced to relive the horrific events leading up to Christie's death. It's difficult to see how today's verdict will bring much comfort to the Bamu family, but I do hope it will allow them to move on with their lives. Now, government figures suggest there were 38 cases of child abuse linked to accusations of witchcraft involving children over a six-year period in the UK. The Congolese pastorship, which represents churches from the community in the UK, says that any ritual abuse should not be tolerated. Richard Hoskins is an expert on ritual crimes. Though those believed to be possessed by Kindoki are only children, they um, can, in the minds of those who believe this, cause total havoc. Because it's not the child as such, it's the Kindoki working through the child. They act as a conduit for this evil force which can break apart families. What took place in the Christie Bamu case is a leap, a jump. Uh, to something utterly feral. Absolutely horrifying to hear. Now, shortly, you'll hear more on how this news has been received by Nottingham's African communities and whether it's fair to single out African-based spiritualism, and in particular, the Congolese church for criticism. But first, Debbie Ariyu, the executive director of Africans United Against Child Abuse, is here to explain what's being done to tackle faith-based child abuse. Debbie, welcome to BBC Radio Nottingham. Good afternoon. Tell us what your organisation's doing and some of the issues we just heard about there, such as witchcraft and spirit possession. Uh, What work are you doing within African communities? Well, Africa has been going since 2001, and we were actually set up uh, as a result of the Victoria uh, Klimbia case, which uh, ironically uh, was also uh, also had elements of uh, witchcraft branding uh, involved in it. And uh, we've been doing a lot of work in our community around uh, working with faith organizations. And we, we, you know, we have uh, different projects across London. Sadly, we don't have anything in Nottingham, but we do have projects in Yorkshire. And we have uh, another uh, office in Manchester where we're working with uh, African faith organizations, especially the African churches, to improve their child protection and policies and procedures and ensure that practices such as, uh, such as witchcraft branding uh, well, we can't tell them not to do it, but that you know the, the practices do not lead to uh, children being abused. However, even though we're working with churches, we realize that you know there will always be. It should always, we should we should we should imbibe a carrot and a stick approach. The work with the community is a carrot approach. You know, we're trying to raise awareness to educate, but there will always be people who will not. Uh, who, who will not fall within, uh, uh, you know, uh, the remit of the work we're trying to do for many reasons. And we've seen examples where the pastors, the people who are setting up what they call churches, but the main aim is nothing spiritual, it's just to make money. So it's a money-making venture. Now, organizations like that would not engage with uh, the, world, the, the sort of work we're trying to do at Africa. And one of our concerns at Africa is simply that lots of people who don't know any better are ending up going to those places. And uh, we're seeing that 
children are being abused, um, for example, as a result of witchcraft branding by a particular pastor, a so-called pastor, and the parents have to pay the pastor to have the child delivered. And so we're saying that money has become a key, a key factor in the growth, in the branding of children. Now, when I've said all this, we're working with African churches. This is not just an African issue because we're seeing witchcraft branding cases uh, in other communities that are not African. Well, in that, but with, we, with that in mind, is it unfair that, that Congolese churches are being singled out for criticism here? Uh, well, it's, I think it's both ways. Um, it's not, it's, this is not an African or a Congolese problem only. We've seen cases everywhere. However, some of the very, very terrible cases that have occurred in the UK have been linked to uh, Congolese churches. So, in a way, I can understand why people feel that there's something that's not right there. But it is not just a Congolese problem. It is not even just an African problem. The burden of children as witches is, an, is, is a global phenomenon, that we need, and we need to understand that. Well, tell us about the kind of child protection places uh, policies that are currently in place. There's no compulsion for any faith organization to have uh, child protection policies. But in terms of the work we're trying to do with churches, for example, in Yorkshire, we're saying to them, look, firstly, you need to, uh, you need to have a review of all your practices. Do they favor children? For example, you know, we don't, we, we don't believe that uh, uh, it's okay to grant children as witches. In fact, we're campaigning for a law against that. But in the meantime, if, even if you have to do it, you have to make sure that you follow proper procedures around, is it safe? Well, firstly, is this judge really a witch, actually? Is it safe? Is it safe? Is practice is safe? For example, are you beating the child? Or you, is, the, is the emotional abuse in terms of what you're trying to do? Are you praying for the child, fasting the child for many days without food or water? Those practices are abusive towards children. We, we tell churches, look, you need to have policies that will ensure that you have the right people working in your church. Uh, as, as, as pastors, as Sunday school workers. So you need to do credit, uh, sorry, as a credit check. You need, no, you need to do a, a CRB check. You need to take references. You need to be sure that you have the right people in place. Those are some of the examples of what we're telling churches to do in the places of worship. But like I said, these are churches who have volunteered to do this. And we're seeing an increasing number of churches doing that. What, we're, what is not compulsory is that the government has not actually mandated or, uh, or compelled any faith organization to ensure that definitely they have child protection policies. So there's a huge gap there. Now, the founder of Nottingham's African Institute for Social Development, Amdami Juma, is here to share his thoughts. Welcome to BBC Radio Nottingham. Oh, thank you for having me. Can you explain where this belief in witchcraft within some African communities originates from? Well, the, the belief in witchcraft is uh, it's, it's widespread uh, everywhere in the world. Um, from the African Institute's uh, research, we've, we've found that it is something that uh, people believe in uh, um, all over the world. But this particular child abuse and uh, from the African church, um, widespread in the Congo, in Nigeria, and other African uh, countries, it's very disturbing. And um, from the 15,000 uh, children that have been uh, contacted by Save the Children charity, they found that 70% of children in Kinshasa, the Republic, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, were chased from their home, uh, the ch parents asked them to leave their homes because they were witch. Um, basically, the pastors who are ruthless and who are chasing money uh, will tell the parents that your children are witch. And there is a cost to get them uh, delivered from uh, you know, the devil that have occupied children. Um, I did some I did some uh, contacts with the uh, local pastors, and most of them say that they do that work. They can help with the. Uh, and that's in Nottingham. In Nottingham. Well, I was going to ask if this is something that you've come up against in your work 
working within Nottingham, and clearly it is. Yes, um, I, I didn't visit uh, the, how the work uh, takes place, but I'm, I'm sure uh, this abuse uh, is happening, uh, and uh, there are so many reasons why people want to have a, a community church, and um, I don't see why they shouldn't have, but from our point of view, we think that churches should have a, a, a minimum um, procedure of being set uh, set up, and they should abide to the uh, the law of land and policies. They should have strict uh, child protection, and we should make sure that uh, the child protection is followed uh, to it later, because uh we don't want to see uh abuse uh happening now and again now while this case has highlighted something that's horrific such a horrific case of abuse it's also cast quite an unflattering spotlight on some african beliefs do you think that's a fair assessment when you call it african belief i think it's very unfair because these churches are christian churches and the christianity was imported uh, to Africa from Europe, you know, from England, from Rome, from German. I mean, I'm talking about Protestants, Catholic and, and Anglican Church, with the Church of England. Um, if you go through the, uh, the Christianity, you, you find this exercise. But the uh, abuse is what disturb us. Um, because uh, I don't believe that uh, people who believe in Jesus Christ, who would uh, call for love, then <laughs> turn that love to abuse and uh, uh, beating, and which led to murder. Uh, so it's not African, uh, and um, obvi obviously we have to take responsibility and uh, the law should be blind in this matter in terms of uh, looking at uh, what happened and uh, uh, taking the, the course of law. Clearly in a case like this, where it's uh, ending in something so horrific, a child being killed, um, I suppose there's no case for cultural relativism. But where African spiritualism or forms of some parts of African communities of spiritualism is, is, is alive, should there be a, a case for supporting that, for allowing people to practice ideas of witchcraft and things related to that in, in Nottingham today? Well, the, the, the ideas of witchcraft are also addressed by white culture. Uh, and, and they see the witchcraft as a harmless uh, practice. Uh, so you, you, you it's very difficult to put limits to how people think. Uh, and certainly from the, the the African Institute for Social Development point of view is that w people should be allowed to express their uh, their views and we just have to abide to abide to the law and make sure that uh, abuse don't happen uh, whether it's witchcraft or practicing of uh, faith or practicing of uh, uh, spirituality these are the things that people have freedom to do. Um, in in this case particularly, I think we shouldn't um, look at African as a whole, as a negative. Uh, and I, I, I think that's what tends to happen with the media. Obviously, there are very good media, uh, and which we are very really happy to, to be part of and work with. But there are other media who decide to take the extreme cases and highlight that you know this is how savage African are 